Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my Fluid Art channel. I am working tonight on my collaboration piece for Nate's Art Lab collab with all of my Patreon members. I'm very excited. Uh, the challenge that I set this month was for um, everyone to leave at least a third of their canvas with some negative space. Negative space is something that every artist should know how and when to use. Um, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're doing photography or you know, uh, if you're a graphic designer, if you do mixed media work, if you paint with a brush or do fluid art, negative space is a really important element that you should be proficient with. So uh, it, it's all about um, in using your intent to leave some space for the eye to rest on the canvas so that the main composition really stands out. So I have a really great negative space color uh, today. I've chosen uh, a custom color, which is Liquitex Deep Liquitex Basics Deep Violet mixed with Deco Art uh, Berry, which is a, a metallic color also. And then I added just a little bit, a, a little squirt of uh, Golden's Fluid Acrylics Diaxazine Purple just to deepen the tone a little bit. But it is a beautiful raspberry, delicious color and it's metallic. I think it's going to be great as a negative space color. Um, and then I have, uh, this is this little piggy. Uh, pigments in uh, two different colors. This is Frost and Mermaid. Frost was a little too light and Mermaid was a little too dark for what I wanted, so I um, combined them to come up with this color. I guess I'm into custom colors at the moment. Um, this is DecoArt 24 Karat Gold with a healthy squirt of uh, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Um, I have Titanium White and uh, from by Amsterdam. And then I'm going to incorporate the negative space color into my pour as well. This is one of the tricks that I like to do if I wanna make sure that my negative space uh, color is integrated into the design, I make sure it's part of the color palette of my poured paints. So um, these three are metallic colors. So when I layer my cups, I have three uh, seven ounce cups here. When I layer my cups, um, uh, I will make sure that the white is in between every one of these colors so that the metallics actually have something to bounce off of. Um, and so when I do my pour using the uh, negative space color, hopefully the whole thing becomes integrated that way. So um, first things first, I'm going to layer, oh yeah, I'm going to layer these three cups. I always get confused. Do I put my base coat down or do I layer my cups? Layer my cups is the better idea. That way I can put it right on top of the surface. Okay, so um, my idea today here is to do three small ring pours, wreck them out, and then spin it. Um, and I want to do it in kind of a, uh, I want to do one here, one here, one here, and then kind of wreck them so that they kind of create an Enzo circle. This is the idea. We'll see how it works. As I spin it out, it might get all warped and, and crazy, and, and that's okay. So we're just gonna uh, play with some colors today, and with intent, we're going to leave some negative space. So let's get started. I think the last color uh, in these, actually, I'm gonna do traveling ring pours, not just a ring pour. Um, so a little bit of white in the bottom, just to finish off uh, the pour. So when um, when you're layering your paints, we always remember, if you're new to this, always remember that the la first color in the cup when you're layering is the last color out when you're pouring. So this will be the last, that white will be the last color to come out. So on top of that, I'm gonna put a little bit of this gold color. Mina Villegas calls this combo um, marigold. It is such a beautiful color. So I'm going to do small layers, especially here to start. So I've got my white, I've got my gold, and I'm going to keep going with the, the white in between every layer. We call this an isolation layer, and frequently you do an isolation layer uh, for two reasons. One is if you're worried that two colors that you want to use may create mud, you put a little um, isolation layer of white in between and it keeps it from blending um, or to separate out 
metallic colors. Metallics are metallics because they use mica flakes in them and they tend to float to the surface, especially with thinner consistency paints. And then they just, if you put two metallics together, those mica flakes just kind of blend together and they uh, create kind of a, um, a grayish gross color. So um, I try and avoid that also. So here we go with the white after that raspberry color. And now we're gonna go with the blue. Oh, that's a good frosty blue color. I love it.
So here is the wet result. This is not at all what I was going for, but I did manage to keep some negative space. <laughs> I knew as soon as I started pouring that first cup that I had my, I had poured away, I had uh, too much paint, period. So I still have one layered cup that I haven't used. So I'm gonna do another painting right after this, apparently. <laughs> the good thing is these colors are gorgeous and I'm happy with my uh, final result. The composition is kind of cool. The motion is unexpected. I loved the wrecked lines of it. Um, I love the negative space here matches the negative space here that's inside the, the composition. Beautiful. I love it when there's balance like that. So let me take you in for some details. I love that I just managed to keep a little bit of the purple here on the outside edge, but look at these gorgeous lines. Wow, so happy with that. I love that little fold right there. That wreck line is gorgeous and that marigold uh, color. Oh my gosh, look at these lines right here. Let me get out close. Look at that. Woo, that's pretty. Wow, that's nice. I love that. Let's see this too. Oh my goodness. Gorgeous. Okay, okay. It's not what I intended, but I'm happy with it anyway. I really, really, sometimes all you have to do is make sure you have colors that work really well together and then, you know, adjust your expectations as you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. That is cool. Okay, I'm happy. Uh, I did pull out that little bit of a line right there on the end, it was a little too blunt. Uh, so I just used my um, chopstick to pull it out. I pulled out each side once and then uh, combined them with the stick. That was cool how that worked. I can't stop looking at these beautiful lines. Wow. Look at that area. That's my favorite spot right there. I love this this motion. Where's my finger? That, I love that motion right here. And then it kind of feathers out into this. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Wow. Okay. So let's stay tuned for the dry results. So here we have the dry results and I have to tell you, I think this is spectacular. I really wish I had planned to do it this way <laughs> because I really love this composition. These colors are fantastic. And the negative space worked out exactly as I had hoped. Using that same color within the pour created some harmony and balance and a purpose for keeping the negative space because it creates that harmony with the uh, the main composition, the focal point. So let me take you in for a close up. I just love the way that this glows. Look at this uh, beautiful dark raspberry color. Uh, because I used the OXO spatula, there are some lines in it. Um, it dried completely flat, you can't feel them. That's just the mica flakes in the metallics that gather when you move it. Um, if I had just tilted this out, that wouldn't be there, but I actually really like that extra, you know, subtle texture in the negative space, I think, space. I think it's really nice. Um, I love um, those two little lines that I pulled out there. It gives, adds a little bit of whimsy to this, um, and I love the way that it uh, finishes out that, um, that section, um, that marigold color, uh, is stunning. Look at the shine on that. So beautiful. Um, that uh, frosty mermaid. Oh my god, look how beautiful that is too. It just dried perfectly. I love this. Everything about it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to use these colors again for sure. And um, so stay tuned. Right Immediately after this I have uh, several artists um, in the collab who do not have YouTube channels, so their photos of their work is immediately following this. Um, and then in the vid video description box is the playlist and links to all of the other participants who do have YouTube channels 
who would like to show you their pieces using negative space. So please follow along, give everybody a, a thumbs up, including me, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and this collab. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more and um, come back and see me sometime.